As you can see me, I'm not so young, I'm an old person. I've been in this field, I started repairing things when I was only, when uh, 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 after technical school, I went for uh, certificate in maintenance. Uh, Mango, that was a certain institute within, within Uganda here. And uh, after that, I, I entered in the field of the maintenance. So I can repair any sort, any all sorts of electronics actually, because the, the simplest principles in electronics is that is understanding its operational principles. But I'm so so special. I am so specialist in power supply. If you have power problem in any equipment, yeah, you can call me or you can try to to Siano. Yeah, you can contact him, and he will contact me, and definitely we shall give you we shall give you whatever. Uh, I mean, maintenance advice or anything that you could need from us. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If, if this is your first time here, my name is Gabriel. If you are my returning subscriber, thank you so much for always watching my videos. I really appreciate Today I'm with my Musei. Hello. <laughs> So this is my Musei, his name is uh, Orembo. Orembo Sebastian. Yeah, Orembo Sebastian, but I call him Oga. I call, yeah. I call him Oga. And today, today I, they brought for me some TVs, as you can see. And this, but this one in particular, it was having some problem that was a bit complicated so I called him to work on it he has just finished working on it so he wants to teach me how he did it generally this is how we learn here so guy you were saying hello hello viewers. Um, my name is Orembo Sebastian uh, I have been in the field of uh, electronic techni technical maintenance um, my period uh, period is now almost over 30 years of experience in the field of maintenance. So I would just say, uh, I was trying to give this young man some little uh, idea how sometimes based on the experience we also create our own expertise, exp exp expertise experience in terms of uh, maintenance. So when we are maintaining, when you are maintaining, I was actually telling him the easiest way you could have maintained this TV before I came here was how was how was to upper, I mean was to observe operational voltages in all sections as per maintenance. For, for me I call it live repair. Live repair is my own creation and uh, this is how I do it. First of all, uh, you put TV on the power, put it on power, whether it is on, uh, uh, of course the TV was not working. So what you do, set the meter, at least uh, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, here. So after putting it there, of course now basically we are going to measure DC voltages within the circuit, within the circuit here. And uh, uh, and this is how we do it. I'll first put this meter at 1,000 rating, and this is what I get. I I turn on this TV. When I turn this TV, I'll measure the main voltage. The main voltage should be to here after after rectification. You can see this 200 and. Uh, 250, but this people's voltage is low. It's a bit small. The input voltage should be a bit small. We can turn it back to AC. Then we, AC, we, we, we shall be getting 190. The voltage is a bit low. It is 190 what? 196 input voltage. So now we turn it back to DC as we are now troubleshooting this TV in a proper way. What we do, we shake the main voltage, you get 250. Here, when it is normal voltage, it is 250, this voltage would be 300. 
after rectification, after rectification process. So now what happened is we go back, we, we put it rating to 200. Meter rating, actually meter, this uh, device is actually the eye of the technician according to principle of uh, electronics, electronic maintenance. So we have uh, put a rating at 200 and here we are going to check the operational voltages. Here, after, after the primary section, the danger part of the voltage, we go on uh, the real, I mean the voltage circuit uses to, 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 to do its functions, actually to maintain its functions. So now what we do, uh, the highest voltage in this CRT should be 110, and uh, you can see it is 112, which is right. So what I would shake now is this one is supposed to be 26, it is 28. This one is uh, supposed to be 10, is 11. This is supposed to be 14, it is 15. So now what happened is, what hap this means the, the normal voltages here, basically this Steve had already rectified, but I was trying to show him how, what was the problem and how he could have done it. The first thing is to understand the voltage, the voltages that must be outputted from the main supply here. So now after that, then we must look into circuit internal, internal operational voltages. These are... Uh, we have uh, this one. I said this is 11. It is supposed to be 11 or 10. Um, here, when you go to the the tuner, it is a uh, an old system. You'll get a five volts. This means this TV has switched on. But again, before you switch on, this is what happens. You put it off. You put put this voltage. This one, when you put it on, you see it is off. But if you maintain, it is. Let me show you, for example. If I do like this, I put it on, and that voltage is not there. But if I leave it in three seconds, of course, that three seconds it means the the IC or the processor here could have done some some operation. It could have uh, tried to put itself. To put it itself on, so this one we could call it a standby, a standby voltage. That standby voltage is the one which we call operational voltage. Circuit operational voltage is only supposed to be five volts. Even in the, even in the, uh, flat TV, flat is screen TV, you must always observe that. Then we have a procedure on how these voltages are to be. How do we achieve these voltages from? From, for example, in the CRT, like in this secret, I mean in this power supply here. Here, they have made a number of turns, uh, a ratio of number of turns per each, and each. Here, the first one, 14 volts, second one is uh, operational voltage, which is uh, 11 volts. But this 11 now is the most important voltage in this circuit. That 11 is can, can give us. Uh, we could call it a 12 volts, but now that 11 can give us 5 volts. How do we do it? What happened? Here in this kind of circuit, they have used um, they have used the transistors, but briefly I will not go so far because I to do, to do need too much explanation into what a transistor is. But they have they use the transistors as a regulator. I think in the next maybe in the next day. Time when we come into this, I will explain to you how do we use transistor as a regulator. But briefly, here it is. Uh, transistor, of course, we have collector, base, emitter. Collector, base, emitter. Collector, base, emitter. Uh, for both NPN and PNP transistors. But what happened is, a collector of that voltage, for example, according to this circuit here, the collector. Basically, you can see they have used a dropper here, and in this dropper they have used the same 11 volts, which is this one. Oh, no, no. It is off. Okay, now it is, it is this 11 volts. They use a dropper. It goes directly to a collector. 
a collector of that transistor. As you can see, uh, before before voltage drop, where it is 11 volts. After voltage drop, we get between 10 to 8 volts. Between 10, it is actually 10 volts. And then after that is the, the voltage which is entering to, into the transistor. Now after after that voltage, we get in the middle. We have uh, this is this is actually this is. Uh, this is the base. We have, uh, let me see, this one. We, uh -huh. So within here, in this case, they have used the regulator eight. Because emitter voltage here, collector voltage is 10, uh, base voltage is uh, eight. And then, of course, what, that means that they, you, put a, you put a zener diode somewhere here. A zener diode will also need an explanation. But the, when you put a zener diode around somewhere here, it will be on the base of that transistor. The emitter voltage output will be eight volts. It is the same to be to be done on five volts. Here we have used the, the same voltage. This is eleven. That eleven. I'm going to show you. It is here. Now, before drop voltage drop, it is a ten. I think you can now see. The, the other drop to voltage which gave us 8 volts, this one, and then this is 8, then, the, then that is 8, this is 10. We, we also drop 10, because why? We want to get, uh, you can see, here we get 6, 6 point something, which is uh, roughly 7 volts. So out of that 7 volts we get, we get, uh, we, we use the zener diode on the base of this transistor, of course, here. We get five volts. That five volts collect. This one is an emitter. This is a collector. This is the um, base. So in the base, there's a zener diode somewhere here. On the other side, I could show you how the zener diode looks like. But a zener diode to somebody who at least has been in this field, there's a zener diode, and then collector, then emitter. We get five volts. That five volts is actually what we call an operational voltage. But this is this is five volts is actually the one this which actually used on this IC. The processor. Uh, on the on the section of the processing over processor. So in the processor we have a gate, which is this one. It is it is it is like a pen. In an electronics gate is we call it a pen. A pen is writing, it helps uh, this thing. To come on, it switches. The, it it helps the processor to collect certain data, and then it switches on. And then in that process, it also it is the pen of the processor, because how do we call it a pen? It because all the display system is done by this is run by the gates. The gate is a small IC on this side here. This is what we call. Uh, a microchip like this in this tip we have they have they have used what to call a microchip but within the microchip we also have oh, the gate the gate is that small ic but within that ic this ic operates on only five volts when it is flat screen it is a uh, three volts 3.3 volts and uh, in that now the principles goes on but the processor for the flat is not like this one. It uses only three. Vo I mean, one volts. The the processor operates within under one volts. So those are the principles as of now. So that is how this is circuit. But so the easiest way to maintain this kind of circuit is just understanding their operational voltages per section. If you know that, uh, as I've explained, if you have understood, if you have anything, yeah. Can ask and maybe next time we shall have your throat. That is it. Uh -huh. As you can see me, I'm not so young. I'm an old person. I've been in this field. I started repairing things when I was only when uh, 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 after technical school. I went for uh, certificate in maintenance. Uh, Mango. That was a certain institute within within Uganda here. And uh, after that, I, I entered in the field of the maintenance. 
So I can repair any sort, any all sorts of electronics actually, because the simplest principles in electronics is that is understanding its operational principles, and this is the, the only the biggest challenge that some people do usually have is uh, if you can understand how all electronic things operates, you must understand they all operates only. Let's say I can tell you and I confirm that all electronic electronic equipment operate on a battery. A battery is a DC voltage. Uh, this DC voltage um, is that all, all in the all, they operate within DC voltage. So it doesn't matter the nature of the voltage because now, why people can say when you say all machines operate on DC, but if somebody you have gone into the principles of electronics, you will realize that it's true. Electronics operates on DC voltage. So, um, so if you can only understand that, then you know ele electricity. Then why electricity? Electricity is the cheapest source of elect uh, I mean, it's cheapest source of uh, source of supply. So therefore, they only use electricity to simplify. Uh, I mean, uh, power consumption. Because if uh, if I could operate this TV and get 110 volts to operate a flyback, I would need the uh, I don't know how many batteries. So now, what the only simple principles they came here is what we call principle called rectification. Rectification is a principle used in electronics to convert electricity into DC. So this is the simplest principles. But now, the challenges people usually get in maintenance is that uh, I, they don't understand this. But if you understand it now, the better. Of course, Electronics operates on DC generally. You, if this TV, I could put a battery and you operate all section of this TV. But therefore, since it is expensive, battery is expensive, we use a simple supply electricity. So therefore, we use the rectification process. Rectification is just converting electricity to DC. Converting electricity the other way around. So now, I can repair all sorts of TV, all, all sorts of TV, let's say TV in general, uh, no matter what type or no matter what kind of TV, and then also I can prepare DVD, uh, cameras, um, you mentioned them, this dryer, this, this is saloon things, uh, flat irons, uh, packos, we have uh, blenders, what? Music system. Music system, amplifiers, I'm the best. I'm actually a super in amplifier repair, amplifier maintenance. I can maintain any amplifier in any nature. And even design, I mean, I can maintain any amplifier um, at any capacity because I know amplifiers they usually have um, those principles, transistors principles, actually, principles of electronics and transistors. If you understand transistors, you can be a good technician in the, um, in the, uh, maintaining amplifiers. But I can ampli um, I can assure you can maintain all electronic equipment, including um, uh, computers. Uh, they have the they are the, uh, okay, not software. Software is uh, the, the other side. But then after the hardware part of it, that, that part that that actually carries the top of the software is what I do. I maintain all sorts of electronic equipment. So long as you have any which we have failed, there's a